The series begins in a prison in Korea, where there was a prisoner named Dong Soo, who was talking to the prison boss in his room. It seemed strange because the boss didn't really want to talk, but eventually agreed. Soon after, the boss gave Dong Soup a piece of paper with his bank account number on it. It was clear that Dong Soup was a powerful person who was trying to use money to get special treatment in prison. Dong Soup was suspected of being involved in illegal money activities. Later on, Dong Soup was taken to another room, where a man named Hari, who said he was a prosecutor, was waiting. At that time, Hari wanted to know where Dong Soup had hidden all the illegal money. But there, Dong Soup was acting arrogant and didn't want to confess. To scare Dong Soup, Hari threw his gum on the table. He also showed Dong Soup a paper with pictures of his friends who had been arrested, which made Dong Soup worried because there were only a few friends left, and it seemed like Hari would find evidence of the illegal money. At the same time, somewhere else, people were busy counting a lot of money, which was the money Dong Soup had earned from illegal activities. Suddenly, a supervisor got a call from Dong Soup, who told them to keep the money safe in a specific place. Shortly after, Dong Soup's men quickly loaded the money into a car to transport it to that safe place. Meanwhile, Hari had just been released from prison, and he reached out to someone who happened to be a computer whiz or hacker. Soon after, Hari got into his car, drove to a hotel, and contacted the hacker again, named Vyong Min. This hacker had the skills to access all the security cameras in the hotel. As Hari entered the hotel, he met two security guards. There, he pretended to be on a phone call while secretly taking pictures of their faces. He sent these photos to Byung Min to dig up more information about these guards. Coincidentally, one of the security guards turned out to have a heavily pregnant wife. Byung Min also managed to find their personal phone numbers and sent a fake message to the husband, claiming that his wife's water had broken. This caused the security guard to panic and leave his post. This was when Hari, wearing a similar security vest, approached and identified himself as a police officer. He claimed that there was something suspicious happening on the top floor of the hotel and that the police were going to conduct a raid. In that moment, the young security guard, aware of the illegal activities that often took place on the top floor, was easily persuaded by Hari to leave the area. Hari was now able to move freely without any security guards around. Outside the hotel, Dong Soup's men had just arrived and were making their way upstairs. When they entered the hotel room, they found Hari taking a stack of money from a safe. They were confused about who this person was, but Hari told them to stay quiet. Suddenly, a tall and strong man named Jean Wong appeared from the doorway. He was Hari's partner, tasked with handling any physical confrontations that might arise. Then a fight ensued between Jean Wong and Dong Soup's men, and Jean Wong's exceptional strength allowed him to defeat them all. In the parking lot, some people from the prosecutor's office arrived and tried to go up to the top floor as well. When they reached the top floor, they were surprised to find that Dong Soup's men had been defeated by an unknown group. Now, let's go back to Hari and Jin Wong. They gathered all the money and loaded it into their car, then tried to escape. Unfortunately, they were caught by the prosecutor's office and the police, and a chase began. At that time, Hari and the others were struggling during the pursuit, but suddenly a woman on a motorcycle appeared. She quickly sped away and disrupted the chase. At an intersection, she made a sharp turn, causing the police car to stop. This gave Hari the chance to escape. Later on, outside the prison, Dong Soup had just finished serving his prison sentence and felt safe to go back to his illegal money activities. However, the prosecutor's office showed up, and a prosecutor named Prosecutor Jung revealed a car filled with money that belonged to Dong Soup. The total amount was $20 million in cash, and it was taken by the prosecutor's office. Although Dong Soup was free, he suddenly became poor because all his money had been taken away. It turned out that this was all thanks to Hari and his three colleagues, who called themselves the player. One month ago, when Prosecutor Jung first met them, he was curious about these four individuals. The first person was Jin Wong, who worked as a hired fighter and would take on any opponent as long as he got paid, especially gangsters. The second person was Byung Min, a top-notch hacker who had won many international anti-hacking competitions. The third person was Hari, but strangely, there was no available information about him. Meanwhile, in a house, Hari and his two friends were discussing their next mission. They had their sights set on a big company owner named Bossium, who was suspected of being involved in a bribery case. They planned to steal the money they believed to be the bribe funds, which amounted to $8 million. They chose to steal it because they knew Bossium wouldn't report it to the police. 
even if it was stolen. However, they needed one more member who could drive a car skillfully in high-pressure situations. On the highway, there was a woman practicing her driving, but her inexperienced style annoyed other drivers. One car driver got mad and yelled at her. The woman, Ariane, got frustrated too. Suddenly, she pressed the gas pedal, surprising everyone with her driving skills. She chased down the car that had scolded her, overtook it, and performed some daring maneuvers to block it. Later on, Ariron went to a cafe to get some drinks. While she was walking, she spotted a fancy car, the one she had always dreamt of owning. She couldn't resist and got into the car to admire it secretly. Unexpectedly, the car's owner, Hari, showed up and caught her by surprise. At that time, Hari had intentionally used his luxury car to attract Ariong's attention and start a conversation. They chatted, and Hari invited her to join his team because he needed a skilled driver he could rely on. Hari believed that Ariang was the right person for the job. Ariang agreed and visited Hari's headquarters, where she met his two colleagues. They got to know each other and discussed their target, which was Ba Seung. Meanwhile, at a trial, Ba Seung's son, Seung Koo, was accused of harassing a woman. A witness, who was a friend of the victim and her roommate, testified that she had seen the victim unconscious one night after drinking poison, which ultimately led to her death. However, the witness claimed that the victim had taken the poison because her love for Sung Koo was not reciprocated. Prosecutor Jung, who was defending the victim, didn't believe this testimony. He suspected it was false, but strangely the judges accepted it. As a result, Sung Koo was cleared of harassment charges. The victim's mother was left in tears, seeing her daughter's fate sealed after enduring unimaginable abuse. It seemed like no one was on her side. Prosecutor Jung encouraged the mother to appeal the verdict but she had lost hope. She knew that Son Ku was the son of a wealthy conglomerate, and she believed the judges had been bribed to ensure his victory in the case. Back at Ari's headquarters, they were brainstorming their plan to retrieve the money from Ba Seung. At that time, they decided to focus on Ba Seung's son, Son Ku, who had recently been cleared of abuse allegations. Shifting to Son Ku, he walked into a restaurant and accidentally bumped into a female worker. He said sorry, but his strange look at the woman caught attention. He even secretly took a picture of her. The scene then switched to Sun Ku's apartment, where the female worker was tied up and injured. It turned out that Sun Ku had harmed her like he had done to his previous victims. The woman struggled and cried. When Sun Ku removed the tape from her mouth, she bit his hand, hit him with a golf club, and managed to escape. The woman named Su Li ran to the emergency stairs and tried to call the police to report the harassment. However, Sung Ku appeared from behind and silenced her once again. Back at Hari's headquarters, Hari and his friends obtained CCTV footage from in front of Sung Ku's apartment, which showed him with a woman who appeared to be in distress. They'd also identified the woman as Su Li. Soon after, they decided to visit Su Li's mother, who didn't reveal much but showed them that Su Li was in the hospital with severe injuries. Her mother explained that one night her daughter had been attacked by someone who had then fled the scene. On the other hand, Sung Koo made a call to someone named Mike. They were talking about Su Li, with the intention of causing harm to her. However, Su Li is still alive, and it turns out that she was purposely given to someone else to be hurt by a car. Near the hospital, Hari and two of his friends started investigating who the person was that Sung Koo ordered to hurt Su Li. During their investigation, Byung Min found a website link. When they opened it, they discovered that it contained videos of Sung Koo mistreating women on purpose, and these videos were being sold. What's even more disturbing is that the women in these videos were later killed to prevent them from reporting the mistreatment. Suddenly, Byung Min's laptop gave a warning signal revealing their location. Shortly after, several cars showed up, and they turned out to be Sung Koo's gang. Hari and the others didn't have enough time to escape, and Sung Koo's gang smashed the car window. This led to a fight between the three of them and Sung Koo's gang. Unfortunately, they were outnumbered. When Hari and his friends were in trouble, fortunately, Ariyan came to their rescue. Hari and his friends quickly jumped into a car and sped away. Luckily, they managed to escape Son Ku's gang and are now still trying to find the person who hurt the woman on Son Ku's orders. On a city street, Mike were walking together with a woman when Jean Wong and Hari suddenly showed up and confronted him. It turns out, Mike was the person who had hurt Su Li on Son Ku's orders. 
Mike got into a fight with Jean Wong and was then taken to a quiet street, which was where he had hurt Su Li. He was tied up and couldn't escape. At that time, Ari wanted Mike to spill the beans about Song Ku, but Mike refused. Calmly, Hari told Jin Wong, who was in a car, to start the car right away. Jin Wong began driving the car with the intention of running over Jin Wong. But the man got scared and finally agreed to tell everything. After that, Hari put the man in the trunk of his car. However, Jin Wong found the man's cell phone in his pocket and saw a message about a woman who was mistreated and in danger at the hospital. Without wasting any time, Hari rushed to the hospital to save Su Li. Luckily, Byung Min and Ah Ryong also joined in to help. At the hospital, they found out that a doctor who had been bribed by Sun Ku was planning to harm Su Li with an injection. But when the doctor arrived at her room, they discovered that Su Li had already been rescued by Hari and his friends. At that time, they had taken her to a clinic, where Hari knew a doctor who could treat her safely. In the morning, Su Li woke up and tearfully shared everything that had happened to her. She mentioned that when the harassment took place, she had recorded the audio with her cell phone. She kept holding onto her cell phone even during the accident. Upon hearing that, Hori and his friends realized that the cell phone was likely in the possession of the police. However, they had doubts that it would be used as evidence since they suspected that some corrupt police officers, bribed by Sung Ku, might have destroyed it. So their new mission was to retrieve Su Li's cell phone. They started by finding out which police officers were handling Su Li's case and then came up with a plan. The following day, they went to the police station. In the office, the policeman in charge of Su Li's case was seen chatting with his colleagues. Suddenly, he was called away, being informed that his car in the parking lot had been scratched. He hurriedly left the room. While walking, he accidentally bumped into a woman who turned out to be Ah Ryong. Turns out, she had taken the policeman's ID card earlier. Meanwhile, Jin Wong disguised himself as a food delivery person. He informed the police that there was a food delivery from their superiors. The officers were delighted and started eating the food. While they were distracted, Jim Wong quietly approached the laptop containing the latest case files. Now, let's talk about Hari. He joined Ariong, who had just obtained an ID card. With that card, they entered the room where all the evidence was kept. Their goal was to find Su Li's cell phone, and they succeeded. Once they had it, they made their way out of there. The police officer, whose car had been scratched, was quite upset when he returned to his office and found his colleagues engrossed in their meal. His frustration grew when he noticed that his laptop was turned on and suspected that someone had accessed his data. The officer and his team immediately went out to look for the culprits. Soon, a speeding car approached, and it was Hari and his friends inside. Seeing them, the police officers began to chase them. While in the car, Byung Min tried to recover all the data that had been taken from the police laptop. Then they pulled over on a road and made a run for it. Unfortunately, they were met by a group of gangsters who turned out to be Sun Ku's henchmen. This was when Jin Wong had to face them all. Meanwhile, Hari and Byung Min distanced themselves from the fight and climbed to the top of a building. There Byung Min continued to work on accessing the data, which took some time. Eventually, one of the gangsters caught up with them, leading to a fight. <laughs> Hari managed to defeat him in the end. When they were about to leave, several gangsters kept pursuing them. Suddenly, Hari instructed Byung Min to hand over all the data they had collected. Byung Min complied and Hari abruptly left. When things settled down, Byung Min, Jin Wong, and Ah Ryan waited for Hari in the car, but he didn't return. Suddenly, the police who had been chasing them appeared and surrounded them. In that moment, they couldn't escape anymore and were tied up in an abandoned building. Soon after, there's a policeman talking on the phone. He called Boss Yoon to inform him that they had captured the troublemakers. However, surprisingly, Boss Yoon decided to let them go because one of them had met him. It turns out that Ari is currently with Boss Yoon, which shocks Ari's friends when they find out. In this situation, Ari revealed that he had evidence of Son Kud doing something bad and even planning a murder. Ari said he would provide all the evidence in exchange for a ransom. Upon hearing that, Boss Yun, who didn't want his son's bad reputation harming his business, agreed to Hari's request. At that time, Hari wanted the money in cash, and one of Boss Young's men delivered it. There, Hari watched as the men left through a red door with a bag of money. Shortly after he received the money, he immediately handed over the hard disk containing the evidence to Boss Young. 
Meanwhile, at the prosecutor's office, Prosecutor Jun received a sudden call about Su Li, who was now being treated at a clinic and had evidence of her abuse. And as for Ri's friends, they now live in a building and are trying to escape. Ah Ryong cleverly uses her shoelaces to cut the ties on their hands, and they all manage to break free. However, as they are about to leave, they find Son Ku's hired gangsters waiting to block their way. But Jin Wong steps forward to confront them. Now, let's switch to the police officers who were working with Son Ku. They visit the clinic where Su Li is being treated with the intention of destroying the evidence. To their surprise, Prosecutor Jung is waiting for them in the room. Their Prosecutor Jung opens the curtain and finds Su Li wrapped in bandages. He already knew that these police officers were conspiring with Sung Ku, and he immediately has them arrested. Now back to Marie. He arrives at the building where his friends were held, but they are angry with him, thinking that he betrayed them. They'd even find Hori pretending to be asleep. In the car, Ri explains that pretending to betray them was all part of his plan to catch Son Ku. Although his friends are still upset, they eventually believe him. Now, they are carrying out their next mission. Soon after, they received information that tonight Son Ku would be opening a foundation event attended by his father and officials. Hari and Aryong decide to enter first, accidentally bumping into an employee and taking his ID card to gain access to the event. Once inside, before the event starts, Hari distracts the event's MC with a chat, diverting attention away from their real mission. Meanwhile, Ariane connects her laptop to Byung Min's laptop in the car. After they finish their mission, Hari and Ariane left the event. Shortly afterward, Son Ku and his father, Ba Seung, entered the room, and the event began. The event showcased Son Ku's generosity for establishing a foundation for the Korean people. However, something surprising had been prepared by Byung Min in the car. Suddenly, the screen displayed the criminal records of Son Ku and Ba Seung. Everyone who saw it was shocked, and the journalists present quickly started taking photos. The speakers then played a recording of Son Ku harassing Su Li. It was clear that Son Ku intended to bribe the judge and prosecutor, avoiding going to prison. The event turned chaotic, and Son Ku and his father immediately left. Son Ku headed to the basement parking lot and got into his car, but a black car blocked his way. Hari and his friends were in that car. Hari got out and forcefully pulled Sun Ku out of his car. Sun Ku tried to resist, but Hari landed a punch, causing Sun Ku to fall to the ground. After that, they left the scene. A little while later, Sun Ku woke up and Prosecutor Jung appeared before him. He had brought an arrest warrant for Sun Ku due to his harassment. Now let's talk about Hari and his friends. They decide to go to Boss Yim's house and enter through the red door that Hari had spotted yesterday afternoon. It turns out that Hari's plan was to pretend to ask for ransom money so that he could find out where Ba Seung kept his money. Fortunately, Ah Ryong, who is skilled at picking locks, successfully opens the large padlock on the iron door. When they open the door, they find stacks of money. However, suddenly someone with their head covered appears. It turns out that the person who had arrested Hari and his friends was from the prosecutor's office. They had figured out that Hari would target Ba Seung's money, so they intervened to stop his actions. But turns out, Ah Ryong secretly had a sharp object that she handed to Hari. With this tool, Hari and his friends managed to free themselves and then confront the people from the prosecutor's office. Sometime later, Prosecutor Jung receives information about an incident in an old warehouse. He goes there and finds four people tied up. When they remove the head coverings, they realize that all four of them are from the prosecutor's office. Hari and his friends had escaped and decided to tie them up as a way to get back at them. But Prosecutor Jung's frustration doesn't end there. When he talks to his boss, the boss says that Son Ku's case will be closed due to a lack of evidence, even though Prosecutor Jung believes there is enough evidence. This leaves Prosecutor Jung angry because it seems that his superiors have a different opinion. He suspects that the prosecutor's office may have been bribed by Ba Seung, Son Ku's father, to close the case. One day at his home, Prosecutor Jung was trying to figure out who Hari and his friends really were. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, and a courier arrived to deliver a package. Prosecutor Jung was busy on the phone and didn't realize who the courier was. When he finally turned around, he realized it was Hari. At that time, Prosecutor Jung felt annoyed, thinking he was being toyed with, but Hari seemed calm. Hari mentioned that he already knew about the closure of Sung Ku's case and offered to cooperate. He promised to help catch any criminals the prosecutor's office was searching for, 
but in return, the money obtained from those efforts would belong to Hari and his friends. Prosecutor Jung responded to Hari's offer with a sarcastic laugh and asked him to leave his house. Before leaving, Hari pointed out that the difficulty in enforcing the law to catch criminals was due to the lack of ethics among those criminals who easily took money from ordinary people. On the other hand, law enforcement was limited by their strong ethics. This made Prosecutor Jung angry, and he expressed his annoyance, wondering if he should act like them and break the law. Prosecutor Jung wanted to argue further, but Hari interrupted and just handed over his business card to Prosecutor Jung before leaving. Meanwhile, the news and the media continued to report on the actions of criminals, including corrupt businessmen and officials, who seemed to evade justice or receive light sentences for their serious crimes. This led Prosecutor Jung to reflect on his conversation with Hari at that time. On the other hand, at Hari's hideout, he is watching the news about a businessman suspected of being involved in bribery. Surprisingly, the case against the businessman was dropped, and he was set free. Strangely, it was Prosecutor Jung who decided that the businessman was innocent. The businessman director Na is now out of prison and seems to have no guilt, going back to his regular life. At the prosecutor's office, Prosecutor Jung meets with his boss and asks why the case against director Na was closed. Once again, his superiors argue that if there isn't enough evidence, that's why he was released. His boss challenges Prosecutor Jung, saying that if he wants the case to continue, he needs to provide strong evidence. Later, Prosecutor Jung makes a call, and it turns out he's calling Hari. There he tells Hari that he has changed his mind and agrees to their cooperation. After waiting for a while, Prosecutor Jung visits Hari's hideout. However, Hari's friends hadn't been informed about this, so they are shocked and worried, fearing they might be arrested. Hari explains that with Prosecutor Jung on their side, they will select targets to apprehend, and they will take the money they earn from it. Prosecutor Jung explains that their current target is Director Na a wealthy businessman who escaped a bribery case due to a lack of evidence. Their mission is to gather the evidence needed to send Director Na to prison. Once they succeed, they will be allowed to take all of Director Na's money, and Prosecutor Jung promises to turn a blind eye to this. Hari and her friends are thrilled by this prospect, and they begin searching for information about Director Na. Turns out Director Na is not only the owner of a company, but also secretly runs an illegal fighting arena where people place bets and large sums of money are involved. He has made a fortune from this illegal business. At that time, Hari comes up with the idea to go to the arena, and they choose Jean Wong as the fighter. The next day, their mission starts. Hari approaches a business associate of Director Na, an agent who typically introduces fighters to him. To get close to this woman, Hari uses Byung Min to gather information from social media so that they can strike up a conversation and build trust. There, Hari pretends to be an agent, handing over a business card he had prepared in advance. Fortunately, their mission is a success, and Hari becomes friends with the woman. She even invites Hari to an event that Director Na will attend. There, Hari meets Director Na, and from their conversation, he quickly realizes that this person is arrogant and enjoys looking down on others. Afterward, Director Na and his female colleague discussed his illegal fighting arena business. At that moment, he needed a new fighter. But the woman mentioned that currently, he didn't have any new fighters available. However, she suggested that they could ask with an old friend who happens to work as a fighter supply agent. Director Na then meets Hari on a rooftop. In that moment, two fighters are already present, including Jean Wong. Their director Na explains that he only needs one fighter and asks them to showcase their abilities. He decides that the winner will be his choice to join the arena. Jean Wong didn't want to fight because the other fighter was his friend but for the sake of their mission, they were eventually compelled to fight. It becomes evident that Jean Wong is the stronger fighter, causing his opponent to fall to the ground in pain. Hearing that, Director Nan is pleased because he now has a powerful fighter who will bring in significant profits. On one night, a fight takes place in Director Na's arena, and Jean Wong is the chosen fighter. He enters the arena and confronts his opponent. Meanwhile, Hari and Aryong are on a mission to track down the betting money that Director Na has stored. They disguise themselves as employees by wearing uniforms. After sneaking around the building, they discover a room where employees are carrying large bags in and out. It turns out that these bags contain money, and indeed, all the betting money is stored in that room. They hide behind a cupboard, waiting for the right moment to take the money. Switching to Jean Wong, who is still in the middle of his fight, he seems to be treated unfairly by his opponent. He gets kicked in the groin and has his eyes scratched. 
even though it's against the rules. However, Jin Wong doesn't give up and manages to get back on his feet and continue fighting. Eventually, Jin Wong's kicks succeeds in making his opponent fall and lose the match. Suddenly, an alarm goes off, causing chaos in the entire arena. It turns out that the police have arrived to raid the place. Strangely, Director Nod is nowhere to be seen, and it seems like he escaped first. The employees quickly move the money from the room to a safer location. At that time, Hari and Aradong have no choice but to wait until things calm down before they can come out. Once they feel it's safe, the two of them pretend to help another employee load money into a car. When they have the opportunity, they take the car filled with the money with them. Meanwhile, Jin Wong is in the car with Liang Min when he gets a call from his nephew. His nephew informs him that his father has been attacked by some bad people and is now in the hospital. Hearing that, Jin Wong immediately becomes anxious and says he has to go to the hospital right away, leaving Biang Min alone. When Jin Wong arrives at the hospital, he asks his nephew for details about what happened. His nephew explains that his father was attacked by gangsters, and it turns out that these gangsters were acting on orders from Director Na. A few days ago, Jin Wong's brother had been part of a protest because Director Na's company was planning to take away their workplace. However, the protest turned chaotic because Director Na had hired gangsters to harm the people demonstrating. Turning back to Vari, she's waiting for Byung Min and Jin Wong. Byung Min seems delighted when he sees the pile of money in Hari's car, but Hari points out that they all have the same serial numbers, revealing that the money is fake. It turns out that during the police raid on the arena, Director Na intentionally created a diversion, making it seem like the pile of money in the room was real, so that the police would chase after it. In reality, the real money is hidden elsewhere. However, Hari and his friends are not giving up. They come up with another plan to locate where Director Na's money is hidden. Their plan is to go directly to Director Na's office and retrieve data from his laptop. Luckily, on that day, Director Na hasn't arrived at the office yet. Byung Min's job is to hack into his secretary's computer first. The secretary is nervous and worried about getting blamed. Hari and Aryong then pose as computer technicians and arrive to fix the computer. The secretary, who knows little about computers, trusts Hari. There, Hari suggests that if this computer is connected to Director Na's computer, then they should check his computer too. So, Hari and Arudon enter Director Na's office and begin collecting all the data. However, Director Na arrives at his office not long after. The secretary is anxious about being blamed, so she engages in a conversation with him to buy Hari some time to finish his work. Just as Hari completes his task, Director Na enters his office. Luckily, Harit and Arion had enough time to hide. They quietly left the room and went back to their car. Director Na eventually left his office and headed to the parking lot. Unexpectedly, he bumped into Jin Wong there. Jin Wong had come for revenge because Director Na's men had beaten up his brother. Jin Wong lost control and attacked Director Na's men. Security guards quickly arrived and subdued the enraged Jin Wong. Hari and Arion witnessed the situation but couldn't immediately intervene. They got into their car first and then tried to rescue Jin Wong by driving into the crowd. They managed to save Jin Wong and quickly sped away. Back at their headquarters, they accessed Director Na's data and discovered that his money was located at the port. Without wasting any time, they rushed to the port. Upon arrival, Hari got out of the car and posed as Director Na's business partner. Meanwhile, Aryong and Byung Min sneaked in covertly. Soon after, an employee approached them, and Byung Min diverted his attention while Aryong skillfully swiped the key from his pocket. Inside the room, they found it was the CCTV room. They could see Director Na's employees going in and out of a container, where the money was stashed. Jin Wong, who already had this information, headed straight for the container's location. At that time, the employees were startled and immediately confronted him in a fight. In the meantime, Hari discovered that he wasn't actually in business with Director Na. Now, his own employees were chasing him. Byung Min and Aridong got to Jin Wong, who had just finished a fight with his opponents. They quickly grabbed the money boxes and put them in the car. Shortly after, Hari showed up with people chasing him. Jin Wong, who had just dealt with his own employees, had to face those pursuing Hari. Meanwhile, Byung Min and Aridong were already in the car, but were chased by two other cars. Then they reached a dead-end street. The two cars following them arrived, but couldn't find Gung Min and Aryong. Suddenly, Byung Min and Aryong appeared on a motorbike from another car and sped away quickly. 
Meanwhile, Director Na was having dinner when he got word of the incident and became angry. He rushed to the scene and found a box containing money. However, it turned out the money was fake. Hari had actually taken the real money and put it in his own car. Soon after, the car chase with the box had been a diversion. Director Na was furious when he realized Hari had lost his money. But Hari and his friend's mission wasn't over. Now they needed to capture Director Na. To lure him, Hari intentionally went to Director Na's location and called Prosecutor Jung, asking him to come there too. Director Na, who knew that Hari was in the arena, rushed there to catch him. Outside, Ariang was spotted by them, and they started chasing her. Shortly after, Ariang ran inside, followed by Director Na's men. She cleverly ran in circles to outsmart them, which separated Director Na from his subordinates. Eventually, Ariang managed to escape from her pursuers, while Director Na entered the main arena where fights usually happen. Inside the arena, Hari was waiting with a pile of money. Director Na entered and prepared to fight Hari, but suddenly Jean Wong appeared from behind. With a single blow, Director Na fell unconscious. Soon after that, the prosecutor's office, following Prosecutor Jung's orders, successfully arrested Director Na. Prosecutor Jung's success in capturing Director Na made him even more famous. His superiors promoted him to handle more important cases, and even allowed him to form a team for future cases. Soon after, Prosecutor Jung met with Hari and their friends, offering them a spot on his team. They agreed because it felt like they were gaining government support by joining Prosecutor Jung's team. In a flashback scene from 15 years ago, a prosecutor was heading home one evening. He got into an elevator, but then something tied around his neck and lifted him off the ground. He tried to fight, but no one came to his aid. Meanwhile, outside the office, a young prosecutor Jung had just arrived. He was shocked when he heard a loud crash behind him. It turned out that something had fallen on his car and it was horrifying because that something turned out to be a person. This person was a friend of Prosecutor Jung, and he was in a panic, screaming for help. Unfortunately, the prosecutor had already passed away. This shocking incident caused quite a commotion. The deceased prosecutor, Prosecutor Yun Ki, was known for being against corruption and bribery. However, strangely, he was suddenly linked to a bribery case, and his death that night was connected to something unimaginable. Fast forward to the present, there's a presidential election taking place in Korea. One of the candidates, Mr. Kim, was seen delivering an enthusiastic speech, promising prosperity for the Korean people if elected. Then, one evening, Mr. Kim asked his assistant to come to his apartment to bring a document. When the assistant entered the apartment, it was dark inside. Suddenly, he appeared wearing only a bath towel, startling and frightening his assistant. His behavior became even more inappropriate as he tried to make his assistant stay with him. In response, the assistant quickly left, leaving Mr. Keem angry. On her way home, the assistant named Keiju received a call from Mr. Keem, who was supposedly her boss's wife. However, instead of supporting Heiju, Mr. Keem's wife threatened and accused her of being a seductress. She warned Heiju not to report it, or else she'd face serious consequences. Despite this, Heiju continued on her way home. When she reached her apartment, three police officers approached her without any notice. Then they searched her without her consent, and one of the officers secretly placed a bag of white powder in her belongings. Then they accused Heiju of carrying illegal drugs and arrested her. Meanwhile, Hari and her friends learned about the case of Heiju, the assistant to a presidential candidate, who was suddenly charged with carrying illegal drugs in her bag. This seemed highly suspicious because Heiju had a history of heart disease, making it impossible for her to use illegal drugs. They also attended Heiju's trial to see how the case was progressing. Heiju had a lawyer representing her. Earlier, the lawyer had met with Heiju's mother, who had asked for assistance in defending her daughter. Heiju's mother believed in her daughter's innocence, and the lawyer, named Lawyer Jean, was willing to help. Besides that, Hori also went to visit Heiju, who was held in prison. There, Heiju bravely told the truth that she had been mistreated by Mr. Kim. Later on, Mr. Kim's wife called and threatened her. Then, some policemen accused her of carrying illegal drugs. It turned out that not only did Mr. Kim do whatever it took to win the election, but his wife also helped him, even if it meant doing some questionable things. One day, Hori and his friends got information that the presidential candidate Mr. Kim had received campaign funds from someone known as Mr. X. The money was sent by a man who, when checked on CCTV, was also connected to a money laundering case that Hori had worked on before. They decided to track down this man. At that time, Byung-min managed to hack into the man's phone and find his location. 
they headed to that place. Meanwhile, the man was seen using a public phone, but suddenly a group of gangsters appeared and took him away forcefully. When Hari and the others arrived, the man was gone. Ariang was the first to notice a fresh bloodstains. Soon after, a local resident also came forward, having called the police because a man had been beaten and taken away by a group of people dressed in black. Hari immediately started searching for the missing man. Meanwhile, in an empty building, the captured man was brought to someone, and it turned out to be Mr. Keem's wife. It seems the man had plans to betray Mr. Keem, and her wife was in charge of dealing with this situation. They put something inside the man's mouth and injected him with something. In just a few moments, he lost consciousness, and his life slipped away. At that time, Mr. Keem's wife's assistant watched this in horror. To make things even more surprising, Mr. Keem's wife claimed there was another traitor among them. She checked her subordinates one by one and accused someone in front of her assistant. It turned out to be Lawyer Jean, who had been secretly working with Mr. Keem. He had pretended to be a lawyer helping Mr. Keem's victims, but instead, he reported information about them to Mr. Keem and his wife to manipulate the cases in Mr. Keem's favor. Sadly, a few days ago, Mr. Keem's wife's assistant had sought Lawyer Jean's help regarding Mr. Keem's wife's criminal activities to cover up her husband's cases. Now, the assistant was injected too. Not long after, Hori and his friends arrived at the same building. They were about to go inside when something fell onto their car. The assistant had fallen from a height and was rushed to the hospital. At the hospital, everyone waited anxiously. Hari left to make a call to a doctor friend named Yondi. Hari wanted Yondi's discreet assistance. Afterward, Hari contacted Prosecutor Jung because he had evidence to arrest Mr. Kim's wife. Prosecutor Jung and his team immediately headed there. Mr. Kim's wife seemed arrogant and acted like she didn't know anything, but Prosecutor Jung had some surprising evidence. He showed them that her assistant had been injected and fell into a car, but she was still alive. This revelation shocked Mr. Kim's wife, freezing her in her tracks, and she was immediately arrested. It turns out that Ari had called Yeon Hee to secretly hide the assistant in Yandi's clinic and make it look like she had regained her consciousness. Some time later, the assistant, who was still alive, provided undeniable proof and was a witness to Mr. Kim's wife's attempt to harm her. News of Mr. Kim's wife's arrest quickly spread. Lawyer Jean was also arrested because he had conspired with Mr. Kim's wife. Then in the car, someone was seen making a call to Lawyer Jean, who was already in prison. This mysterious figure was known as Mr. X, and he turned out to be the mastermind behind all the crimes committed by Mr. Keem, his wife, and lawyer Jean. One day, Hari received a call from Yanhi, his doctor friend. At that time, Hari was asked to come to Yanhi's house. When he arrived, Yanhi seemed lost in thought and had no expression on her face. She mentioned that her father had come to her house in her absence and took something she had kept for 15 years, which was a key. Her father had entrusted this key to her previously and now he had taken it back. Hari asked what the key was for, but eventually, she understood. It was the key to a safe that contained money. It turns out that Yan He is the daughter of a businessman named Won Ki, who committed a crime by causing the death of a prosecutor from a high place 15 years ago. This incident happened a long time ago. The prosecutor's name was Han Jia, and he used to work with Prosecutor Zhang. Now, Yan Yi is asking Hari for help in finding her father because he disappeared for 15 years and has suddenly reappeared. After that, Hari went back to his group of friends and shared this information with them. He also invited Prosecutor Zhang to handle the case because it was related to the death of Prosecutor Yun Ki, who had been a friend of Prosecutor Zhang 15 years ago. Now their target is Won Ki, a businessman who was involved in a stock fraud case 15 years ago. He was accused of cheating a company out of a $180 million investment. Eventually, the company went bankrupt, and the $180 million seemed to vanish into thin air. One key received a $5 million commission from the proceeds of his fraud before he fled. His escape was allegedly aided by a prosecutor named Prosecutor Yun Ki, who was a friend of Prosecutor Zhang. Yun Jai died after helping One Ki, which made Prosecutor Zhang furious. He insisted that the news claiming Prosecutor Yun Ki helped Won Ki was false and that someone had killed his friend. In another scene, Mr. X instructed his men to visit someone in prison. The person they met was Dong Su, who was initially involved in a money laundering case at the beginning of the film. It turns out that Dong Su is Mr. X's accomplice, and he has a request for Dong Su. Mr. X has a lot of power, and thanks to his assistance, Dong Su will soon be free. 
Now, let's get back to Gori and his friends. They are currently trying to find clues about One Key's whereabouts. They checked the CCTV footage from a few days ago, when he visited Yanhee's house. Byung Min also hacked into the computer there to see if there were any messages from One Key that could be traced. While Ariane was inspecting the area, she noticed several cars and checked her dashboard camera. She finally found a recording of One Key passing through that road. Soon after, Hori and Jean Wong checked the CCTV cameras in the shops asking for permission to view their footage to see if one key had ever passed by. All their hard work paid off, and they now had information about where one key might be. Hari also informed Prosecutor Jung about this, and they immediately headed to the location. They arrived at the edge of a building, and Hari asked the others to stay in the car while they went to the location alone. In a parking lot, Hari finally located one key, but suddenly, Dong Soup and his men also arrived. It seemed they were already aware of the situation. Hari immediately protected one key and began fighting against Dong Soup's men. At that time, Hari appeared to be overwhelmed, but luckily, Ariane arrived in her car and helped Hari and one key. Eventually, they managed to get into the car and escape from the scene. Meanwhile, at the prosecutor's office, Prosecutor Jung's boss, Prosecutor Yu, was secretly working with Mr. X. He was watching events unfold through CCTV and had a plan to arrest Hari. Now, going back to Hari and One Key, they had arrived at the headquarters, and One Key was asked to take a rest. One Key didn't really know who Hari was, but because Hari had helped him, he agreed to rest that night. The following day, Hari explained to One Key that he and his friends were there to assist him. One Key trusted them and mentioned that he needed to go to a place called Wasong. However, on their way there, they found themselves blocked by the police, who had been ordered by Prosecutor Yu. At that time, Hari had no choice but to incapacitate the police officers to continue their journey. Meanwhile, Prosecutor Jung received information about the police officers being attacked and immediately suspected Hari and his friends. He began following them. As it turned out, the location called Wasong was on the opposite side of the island and could only be reached by boat. Hari noticed a boat that had just docked. Using his cleverness, he struck up a conversation with the boat owner, pretending to be familiar with him. On the other hand, Ariang, who was skilled at pickpocketing, took the keys to the boat from the owner's pocket. They took control of the boat and headed to Wasong. When they reached Wasong, they found themselves blocked by the police. One key hid while Hari and his friends tried to outsmart the police who were in their way. In the confusion, one key managed to slip away secretly. He made his way through the forest, eventually arriving at the spot where he had hidden all the money he had saved 15 years ago. However, Hari caught up with him. One key immediately became wary, fearing that Hari might try to steal his money. But Hari said something that surprised One key. Hari explained that taking the money now would put him in danger of being killed by Mr. X, the people who had chased him earlier. Hari suggested that if One key wanted to capture Mr. X, he should testify to the police about what had happened 15 years ago. Initially, one key rejected the idea, as he didn't want to deal with the police and end up in prison just to catch Mr. X. However, Hari pointed out that one key might want to live a happy life with Yanhee. When one key heard his daughter's name, his expression changed. He remembered the time when he used to be close to his only child. But since he had cheated and become a fugitive, their relationship had deteriorated. Deep down, he truly loved his daughter. Hari mentioned that during the 15 years he was missing, Yanhi had always waited for her father to return. She faced all the difficulties in her life, carrying the burden of being the daughter of a bad man. Yet, she continued to wait for him. Suddenly, one key burst into tears, realizing the heavy burden his actions had placed on his daughter's life. Finally, he decided to be arrested and put an end to everything for the sake of his daughter. Soon after, Hari received a call from his friends, informing him of their location. Shortly thereafter, his friends and prosecutor Jung arrived at the scene. Finally, one key was arrested without any resistance. He would become a crucial witness in exposing Mr. X as the mastermind behind various major criminal cases. The following morning, one key was about to get into a car when Yanhee appeared in the distance. Their prosecutor Jung also invited one key to meet his daughter after 15 long years. They had an emotional reunion. However, one key was shot in the head from behind. It was one of Prosecutor Jung's subordinates who had fired the fatal shot. Yanhee could only stand there, witnessing the horrifying incident unfold before her eyes. 
the subordinate who shot Won Ki was promptly arrested and interrogated. Soon after, Prosecutor Jung entered the room, and his subordinate immediately expressed remorse. He explained that he hadn't wanted to do it, but he was threatened. Mr. X had kidnapped his wife and baby child, forcing him to kill Won Ki in order to save his family. He was deeply sorry and could only cry over the terrible choice he had been forced to make. Meanwhile, back at her house, Yan He remained silent and lost in thought, unsure of what to do. Hari came to offer her support. While they talked, Yan He couldn't hold back her tears as she remembered her father once again. At the headquarters, Byung Mi was researching information about Won Ki when he stumbled upon the profile of Prosecutor Yun Ki, who had been killed 15 years ago. Suddenly, his expression changed. When Ari greeted him and noticed his unease, Byung Min seemed scared and quickly closed his laptop. Hari became suspicious but shifted the conversation to another topic. They were now discussing and planning how to capture Mr. X, the mastermind behind this series of cases. Byung Min had an important task to carry out. He knew that one of Mr. X's accomplices was Dong Soup. Before joining Hari, Byung Min had been an employee of Dong Soup's. He was aware that Dong Soup operated an online business involving manipulating public opinion according to orders. Soon after, Byung Min met one of his friends who still worked at Dong Soup's company. His friend informed him that Dong Soup was still involved in that business. Byung Min suspected that there might be data related to Mr. X in Dong Soup's company database. Since the grand plan involved high ranking officials and wealthy businessmen, Byung Min asked for his friend's help to borrow his ID so he could access Dong Soup's company again. When he arrived there, he used the borrowed ID to gain access to the building. Inside, there were numerous employees busy at work. Byung Min discreetly settled at an unoccupied computer. He quickly began hacking into the system, attempting to retrieve all the available databases. The security was tight, and any misstep in the system would trigger a warning alarm. Fortunately, Byung Min managed to infiltrate the system and began copying all the data. However, this triggered an alert that reached Mr. X. They realized that someone was attempting to access their data. Mr. X instructed Dong Soup to go to the office and apprehend the hacker. Soon after, Dong Soup and his men rushed to the scene, instructing all the employees to stop working. The office was dimly lit, making it difficult for Dong Soup to identify the hacker immediately. Eventually, he spotted an empty workstation, and it seemed like the copying process was 100% complete. Then he saw Byung Min attempting to escape, prompting him and his men to give chase. Outside, behind the bushes, Byung Min quickly sent the database to Hori's email and left the tab open. Then, he started running again. Unfortunately, Byung Min was apprehended by Dong Su. There, Dong Soup demanded to know the whereabouts of the file he had just taken. Hidden in the bushes, they could see that the file had been sent to Hari's email. Shortly after, Hari opened the file and was shocked by its contents. Then he hurriedly rushed to Byung Min's location. At that time, Byung Min had been beaten badly and looked battered. After a considerable wait, Hari finally reached the scene to rescue Byung Min. He fought against Dong Soup's men, ensuring Byung Min's safety, and quickly took him into his car. Hari then called Prosecutor Jung because the file sent by Byung Min contained alarming information. However, Prosecutor Jung's assistant answered the call as he had gone to his boss's place. Then, Hari examined the file again and discovered it contained a murder plan targeting Prosecutor Jung. Soon after, Hari rushed to the location where Prosecutor Jung was in danger. Prosecutor Jung had arrived at a building and entered an elevator with another person. Suddenly, the person in the elevator locked the doors and attacked Prosecutor Jung, who was defenseless. Just when things looked dire, someone forcefully opened the elevator door. It was Jin Wong, who immediately shielded Prosecutor Jung and fought off the attacker. Shortly after, Ah Ryong arrived to support Prosecutor Jung, who was in pain. Outside, a speeding car targeted the two of them. In a selfless act, Prosecutor Jung pushed Ah Ryong out of harm's way, but became the victim himself, falling unconscious. Seeing that, Hari rushed to assist Prosecutor Jung, realizing he was still alive. Then he placed him in his car and sped away to seek help. Meanwhile, Ah Ryong and the others got into another car and left the scene. Soon after, they parked on a quiet street where Byung Min shared the details of the cases he had been working on. Surprisingly, all these cases were traced back to a man named Mr. X. What shocked them even more was that the prosecutor who had died 15 years ago turned out to be Hori's father. 
Memmeen revealed that Harid had been keeping this information a secret from them. Right from the beginning, Haridi had invited them to join the mission, with the primary goal of hunting down Mr. X, the person responsible for his father's death. Turning to Hari, he took Prosecutor Jung to their headquarters. Luckily, the accident didn't result in fatal injuries for Prosecutor Jung. He was still conscious and able to communicate. There, Hari handed over the file that Byung Min had acquired earlier, which detailed the planned assassination of Prosecutor Jung. The file also implicated Prosecutor Yu, Prosecutor Jung's superior, as being connected to Mr. X. The following day, Prosecutor Yu held a press conference, falsely claiming that Prosecutor Jung was involved in a bribery case, with fabricated evidence found in his house. This was all orchestrated by Mr. X. After that, Prosecutor Yu tracked down Prosecutor Jung's location to arrest him. He used Prosecutor Jung's cell phone to trace him. However, unbeknownst to him, Hari had deliberately left the cell phone in an empty warehouse to deceive Prosecutor Yu. When Prosecutor Yu's men dispersed, Hari approached and confronted him, shocking him as he hadn't expected to be framed. The scene switched to Hari's friends now. At their headquarters, they were shocked to discover that three of them were considered suspects in a bribery case for assisting Prosecutor Jung. Only Ah Ryong was not involved. They realized they needed to take action, and that meant finding Hari. Back to Hari, he had taken Prosecutor Yu to a secret spot by the lake. There, Hari asked Prosecutor Yu why he had become involved with Mr. X finally. Prosecutor Yu confessed that he had also been threatened by Mr. X. Hari then revealed a recording device, which had captured all of Prosecutor Yu's confessions. This was concrete evidence of his involvement in criminal activities. Afterward, Hari left Prosecutor Yu there alone with the evidence. However, Prosecutor Yu was still in contact with Mr. X at that time. Mr. X demanded that Prosecutor Jung be killed immediately, and the news broadcast to the public. Prosecutor Yu explained that they didn't even know where Prosecutor Jung was. Then Mr. X took an unexpected step. He removed his tie and used it to strangle one of his subordinates. In just a few minutes, the subordinate was lifeless. There, Mr. X coldly suggested that Prosecutor Yu could use this body to claim it was Prosecutor Jung. However, another subordinate approached him and showed him a video. Seeing that, Mr. X was shocked, realizing that he had been recorded during the incident. It turned out that Prosecutor Yu had a small camera hidden on his clothing. While they were by the lake, Hari had secretly attached it to Prosecutor Yu's jacket. Soon after, Hari called Prosecutor Yu, informing him that he had recorded the evidence. Hari says that if Mr. X doesn't want this video to leak, then Mr. X should immediately come to see him. Hari appeared and pointed a gun at him from behind. Hari couldn't contain his desire to avenge his father's murder 15 years ago, but he managed to control himself. He asked Mr. X why he had done all these things. Mr. X responded that he did it simply because he could. He claimed to have control over all the government officials and wealthy businessmen. It was as if Mr. X believed he could manipulate the world to his liking. Out of the blue, Mr. X launched an attack on Hari. Hari was overwhelmed. But fortunately, his friends arrived just in time. Mr. X fled the scene, and Hari chased after him. While his friends confronted Mr. X unfortunately, Mr. X managed to escape. Hari got into his car to pursue him, but was uncertain about his whereabouts. His friends then informed him that they had placed a tracking device on Mr. X, allowing them to trace his movements. In that moment, Hari expressed his gratitude and confessed that this mission had become personal for him. Unlike their previous assignments, he pondered for a moment and decided to have Byung Min and Jin Won ride with him in his car, while Ah Rinong drove a separate van. At first, Byung Min and Jin Won were puzzled about why Ah Ryong had to be separated, but eventually they understood. Ah Ryong, on the other hand, was still unaware of the situation. They realized that they were now considered suspects and could be arrested by the police. They intentionally separated Ah Ryong to ensure her safety during this mission. Now, Ariang was driving a van that had been modified and could be remotely controlled by Byung Min. Consequently, Byung Min remotely disabled the van. Ariang, who was unaware of their plan, was surprised when her van suddenly stopped. She tried to contact them through their communication devices, but there was no response. She now understood that her friends had left her behind to keep her out of harm's way. Meanwhile, Hari and his team had reached the parking lot of a building. Soon after, they entered the building, discreetly subduing a few security guards along the way. They gained control of the security room, where they could monitor the building's CCTV cameras. 
Inside, several government officials and wealthy businessmen were seen heading toward a room. Hari requested Byung Min's assistance in cutting off the building's power supply. In another part of the building, Mr. X was waiting for the officials in a meeting room. During their discussion, the electricity suddenly went out. Hari, equipped with night vision goggles, seized the opportunity to sneak into the room. The darkness provided him with cover, making him invisible and inaudible. Shortly after, he entered the room and turned on a small camera to capture everything happening inside. After that, the power was restored. Unexpectedly, the room's activities were broadcast live on a cell phone and streamed on the internet, visible to all Koreans. Prosecutor Jung, aware that Ari was behind this, tried to go on a search for him within the building. Little did anyone know that Ari was still inside the room, now being broadcast live. However, Byung Min and Jin Wong were under the impression that Ari had already left the room. Inside the room, Ari tell that he was the son of Prosecutor Yun Ki, who had tragically died 15 years ago. His father had been falsely accused of bribery and murdered by Mr. X. Hari emphasized that the entire incident inside the room was now being broadcast throughout South Korea. At that time, Mr. X found himself cornered and unable to act. He attempted to strike Hari, but he dodged his attack and retaliated with a punch. Soon after, Hari exited the room, where Byung Min and Jin Wong were already waiting. Not long after, the police arrived on the scene, arresting Mr. X and the officials. At that time, Prosecutor Jung also appeared, presenting the arrest warrant for Mr. X. Meanwhile, Hari and his two friends found themselves on the rooftop of a building trying to escape. There, Hari lay down because they had reached a dead end, and it seemed like he had given up on avoiding arrest. His two friends did the same. Surprisingly, even though they knew they would get caught, they appeared happy because Hari finally got his revenge on Mr. X. Shortly after, the police arrived on the rooftop and immediately handcuffed them. However, they secretly left their cell phones behind, and it seemed like these phones were sending something. Back at the police headquarters, Ah Ryong, who had been trapped in a car earlier, was already there. On a computer that was on, they received an email. When they opened it, they found a video featuring Hari and his two friends. In the video, they said their goodbyes to Ah Ryong, just moments before getting arrested. This message touched Ah Ryong deeply and made her feel both moved and sad. She considered Hari and his friends as her older siblings, and the feeling was mutual. A few days later, there was a trial for Hari, Byung Min, and Jin Wong. Despite helping catch Mr. X, they were found guilty of using violence, committing violations, and hacking into the security systems of many companies in previous cases. At that time, Prosecutor Jung showed up as a witness, but shockingly, he also confessed that he had been involved with them. Because Prosecutor Jung had been involved with Hari and his friends in solving cases, he felt somewhat responsible for their arrest. To prove their innocence, Prosecutor Jung tried to provide a recording of his voice from their first meeting at the police headquarters. However, when they played the recording, it turned out to be playing music instead. It was revealed that Byung Min had secretly hacked Prosecutor Jung's phone and deleted the recording to protect him. After the trial ended, the three of them were taken away in a detention car. Their Prosecutor Jung requested a moment to speak. Hari expressed that it was fair for Prosecutor Jung not to go to jail because they needed someone to catch the bad guys out there. They all got into the detention car, chatting and starting to miss Ah Ryong. Suddenly, they heard Ah Ryong's voice in the car. They thought they were imagining things, but it turned out she was driving the car. Turns out, Ah Ryong had sneaked in as the prison car driver and was now helping Hari and his friends escape. In that moment, Ah Ryong decided to stay with Hari and the others. Upon knowing that, they all laughed and, with Ah Ryong's driving skills, they were ready to escape from the police. Together, they formed the player team and resumed their mission-solving adventures as before. The series ends. The moral lesson from this series is if you want to escape from prison, make sure you have a friend who is skilled in driving like Ah Ryong, so you can ask her help and run away.